Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was the first step that is pollination. Now the next step in the process of sexual reproduction is fertilization. So this is the most important step where the actual fusion between the male and female gametes take place. So it is the fusion of pollen and egg. So pollen grains and egg. Egg is nothing but the ovum, the female gametes. So the fusion of male and female gametes is called fertilization. So where does it take place? So the fertilization happens inside the ovary. Now what happens is as a result of pollination, the pollen grains are carried from the anther to the stigma. So now the pollen grains are here at the stigma. So now these pollen grains and what is there inside the pollen grains? The pollen grain contains the male gametes. So the pollen grains then passes through this pollen tube. So th this, it forms a pollen tube. You see here, a very thin tube. So this tube is formed by the pollen tube, pollen grains itself, and it passes through the style. And finally, you see, look at this pollen tube. So pollen tube plays an important role here. So this pollen tube finally reaches inside the ovary. And where are the male gametes? You see, these are the male gametes, which are also called as male sex cells or male germ cells. So the pollen grains will form a pollen tube inside the style and this pollen tube will carry the male gametes which are present inside the pollen grains to reach the ovary. And finally, these gametes will reach inside the ovule of the ovary. So this is ovary but this internal structure is the ovule and inside the ovule you have the female gametes. So at this place only the male gametes will also be released. So the male gametes and the female gametes will fuse together inside the ovule. So inside the ovule the process of fertilization will take place. So this is where fertilization will take place and when, when the male gamete and female gamete fuse together they produce a structure called zygote. So structure is nothing but it is a cell. A single cell is formed which is called zygote and then this single cell will undergo repeated cell division to form multicellular structure which will later form into a new organism altogether. So that is how fertilization take place. So the most important thing to be noted here is that the fertilization, the process of fertilization which is taking place inside the ovule that is not as simple as, as I am telling right now because there are two types of fusion which are taking place but we are not interested to know in that detail at this moment. So for now you just understand the pollen grains by pollination reach the stigma of the female reproductive part then the pollen grains uh, the inner wall of the pollen grains will form this pollen tube which will pass through the style and finally it will reach inside the ovule which is present inside the ovary and the male gametes which are carried by this pollen tube will be released inside the ovule and female gametes are already present inside the ovule so the male gamete and female gamete will fuse together to form a single cell structure and that single cell structure is called zygote. So that is how fertilization takes place. So if you look at this structure, you can actually see how exactly fertilization is taking place inside. Now once fertilization has taken place, so what happens? You already have a zygote. Now what happens? So once this is done, now the zygote will start dividing repeatedly to form the embryo. Embryo is like the initial stage of any uh, new organism. Like in case of human babies also, so when a woman becomes pregnant, so inside her body first a zygote is formed, that is one cell. Then that cell start becoming uh, more, num start giving rise to more number of cells by cell division, then it will form a tiny embryo. So that embryo will have the, I mean you know, the roughly it will have the overall features of a human being and then gradually the embryo will develop its different parts and it will become a human baby. So similarly in this case also when the zygote di divides quite a number of times it, fo it forms a rough structure of the plant which is called embryo and this embryo will further grow to form a new plant. But what happens to the other parts of the flower? Because whatever has happened has happened inside the female reproductive part of the flower. But after that, what is going to happen to the flower? So now what happens is 
the ovule develops a thick coat and forms the seed so this was the ovule of the plant right so this was the ovary the outermost uh, swollen structure and this internal this structure was the ovule so now this ovule will develop a thick coat around itself and this will become the seed so this structure is now seed and what happens to the ovary this entire ovary then ripens to form the fruit so the ovary became becomes the fruit so that is why you would have seen that first comes the flower and then the flower undergoes reproduction and then the flower gives rise to the fruit correct and then again that fruit in the, the fruit in inside the fruit is present the seed so now think of any fruit for example mango have you ever seen how does a mango look like so let us say this is your mango okay now inside the mango you would have seen a seed so mango is the fruit and this is the seed so mango is basically the ripened ovary and the seed the hard structure which you see inside that is nothing but the ovule so that this is what happens after the fertilization has taken place and if you look at the structure of the seed now the seed within itself it contains a tiny plumule and a radical so plumule is a tiny shoot and radical is a tiny root so basically this uh, if you look at the structure of the seed it has the capability to give rise to a new plant because this tiny shoot will later form a new plant the tiny root and the tiny shoot they will grow and develop to form a new plant altogether and what are these cotyledons cotyledons are nothing but the seed leaves they provide nutrition to, to this tiny shoot and root so that they can grow so that is how the seed can and give rise to a new plant in fact you would have seen that there are seeds which are available in the market so if you buy those seeds and put it under the soil water them regularly what happens it gives rise to a new plant so from where do you get those seeds so those seeds are actually obtained from some other plant and that those seeds are nothing but the ovule now after the flower undergoes fertilization the flower the ovary of the flower becomes the fruit and the ovule becomes the seed now you might ask that okay that, that's fine that means the female reproductive part is basically uh, resulting in the formation of fruit and seed but what happens to the other parts of the flower like the petals the sepals what happens to them now after that now after this process of fertilization has taken place the petals the sepals they all fall off so they all will everything else will fall off only what will remain back is the ovary and the ovule so ovary will form fruit and ovule will form seed so now see these are such interesting things because so now see these are such interesting things because you would have seen in uh, your garden that for any plant first we are flowers and then those flowers later will form fruit so this is how it exactly happens now the fourth process or the fourth step that is involved in the process of sexual reproduction is germination so this is the process where a seed will develop to form a seedling that means as i was telling that the seed is capable of giving rise to a new plant altogether so this process of seed developing into a seedling seedling is like a small plant that is called germination so this is the seed if you look at the internal structure of the seed inside the seed is present a plumule and radical remember these terms plumule is to shoot radical will give rise to root radical will develop to form root and plumule will develop to form the shoot system of the plant and cotyledons are nothing but the seed leaves and they provide nutrition to the plumule and the radical so the embryo now as i had said that fertilization had taken place inside the ovule that means zygote which later developed to form embryo embryo is also present inside the seed so that embryo inside the seed it remains dormant for a very very long time that is it remains inactive but when favorable conditions come back these uh, embryo they forms the seedling which in turn forms the plant so that is why this part of the seed so inside the seed a lot of nutrition is there because you know uh, th this embryo is there which can which and the embryo needs nutrition when it wants to grow correct so that is what happens inside the seed 
So you see it gradually forms a seedling and then this gradually grows to form a new plant. Again, you, when you form a new plant, the plant will be your flowers. The flowers will undergo reproduction. It will form fruits and again seeds will be present inside the fruits and again the same cycle would repeat. So that is how this, this entire phase of seed giving rise to a seedling and then the seedling giving rise to a plant, this process is called germination. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.